Okay. Well, first off, just want to say thank you for you guys uh, jumping on and uh, taking time out of your day uh, to visit a little bit and want to talk a little bit about our receiver group and then uh, open it up for questions. But really, really appreciate the uh, the approach that our group has had. Uh, I think since February, uh, when we got together, you know, we've been installing a, a new system and uh, there's a pretty steep learning curve within it. And uh, guys have really worked hard to pay attention to the details, um, you know, understand all the all the things that go into it and have really appreciated that from them. And then, you know, obviously had a couple newcomers join us in the summertime uh, between Jacob and uh, Reese and, uh, you know, they've stepped up and, and uh, took advantage of that time in the summer to learn. And uh, I really like the room, you know, where we're at right now. I think there's, there's a real competitive spirit in it. Uh, really the, you know, we have some youth, um, you know, starting out with Reese Vandersee, a uh, freshman, you know, and then you go to that group with uh, Jerry Bowie, Dayton Howard, TJ Washington, group of redshirt freshmen for us, and uh, guys that are guys that are constantly learning and developing and getting better each week, and even our veteran guys. You know, Jacob Gill, uh, you know, hadn't played a ton of football uh, before getting here, and and yeah, you can can see him continue to get better and uh, progress each week, and it's been good to get Seth Anderson back into the fold. So, love the approach that we've had to this point. Uh, need to continue to to work to get better each week and take advantage of of each opportunity we have. But it's a really good group, and I've enjoyed working with them. I'll open it for questions now. All right, Coach. First question will be from Chad Leistico. Yep. Hi, John. Um, it seemed like early on in the season you were going heavy with uh, Reese Vanderzee and Jacob Gill. But you've you've gradually folded other guys in into the mix here. How can you kind of walk through the process of what got those guys like like Jarrett, uh, Dayton on the field more, and kind of if you feel like you're you're in the rotation now that you want to be in? Yeah, I, I think it's a combination of two things really. One is it, it's a long season, and so it's a physical season. And especially when you when you play in the conference that we play in, uh, you the the way that you know Jacob and Reese play. Uh, they play hard and so wanted to try and try and manage some reps, be able to get more, have them a little bit more fresh towards the end of the game. And, and so that, that was one side of it. And then the other side of it is, is earning the, the trust of, you know, Bowie and, and Dayton and, and they've continued to progress each week. They get better. They're working at their craft and, and they're paying attention to the details. So you don't want to put somebody out on the field that, that you can't have trust in. And, and those two have certainly done a great job. Uh, week to week, earning that trust and earning more opportunities to be on the field where you feel like you don't have to have uh, just two guys playing. And so it's been a benefit for us. It's a it's an opportunity for those guys to get out and impact the game. And then also for Reese and Jacob uh, to be a little bit more fresh throughout. Uh, next question is from Corey Breda. Hey, coach, kind of along those lines, I don't think Jacob Gill had I we didn't have a catch. Did he have a target on Saturday? Was that by design or was he dinged up? I, it looked like he was on the field most of the game. Yeah, that, that was just the way the game shook out. You know, there, there's certain certain uh, concepts that you anticipate where the ball's going, dictated by the coverage. And, you know, we had we had one uh, that thought might have gone to him on a slant play to the boundary, um, ended up getting flushed out of the pocket. And that's just the way that, that it unfolds sometimes. You, you want to try and – uh, create as many targets for your guys as you can. And, you know, certainly towards the end of the game uh, with the rotation where it was, uh, he would have had that high cross uh, that Dayton had, uh, but wanted to give Dayton an opportunity there. And and uh, Jacob's Jacob's selfless. Like, I mean, he he is he's one of the most unselfish guys that I've ever been around. And he does his job day in and day out. And when the ball finds him, he's in the right spot at the right time. And just the way that the game unfolded, uh, limited opportunities within the throw game that he wasn't targeted, but he found a way to impact it in other ways. Our next question is from Tom Kaker. Hey, John. Um, after the game against Washington, several guys said that the receivers and specifically had their best week of practice. What is What did that mean to you in terms of what were they doing better in the last week or so that that caused that improvement? What What did you see? The biggest thing that I felt was them trusting the process. We, we talk about that often. There, there's a standard that we want to uphold in that room. And the other thing is guys are continuing to get more comfortable understanding the scheme, understanding the techniques, the fundamentals that we're teaching. And so when that clicks and they can think less about those those techniques and fundamentals because – They've worked at it so hard. Then they have the ability to play fast. And that's what we saw last week where guys were playing fast. We were getting in and out of breaks. We were making the the contested catches. And that's what we have to carry over 
stress them. The challenge was, can you carry that over to Saturday? And that's what we have to do each and every week is, you know, we, we have to come to practice with a mindset. We got two good work days on Tuesday and Wednesday. Can we take those opportunities to work the fundamentals, the techniques, but make it feel like it's game day. And so when you get to Saturday and you're in that environment, it's not a surprise. And I think guys have just been sticking to it. They, they, it's like I said, this group, they work extremely hard. They care. They understand what their job is run or pass and they embrace the role and they, they want to get better each day. And so you started, you saw it start to click uh, last week and we got to carry that forward throughout the rest of the year. Uh, next question is from David Eichholt. Hey John, appreciate you taking the time. Uh, Several guys kind of point to Jacob Gill as being one of the leaders of the room, and that's kind of a rare thing when you have a guy come in January and you kind of look across the board and it's a very, very young room. Uh, what have you seen from Jacob that has really allowed him to ascend in that leadership type role? And just what's the impact he's been on, on a lot of the younger guys that have not played as much football as he has? Yeah, I, I've been I've been so impressed with Jacob Gill. He, he got here in the summertime. And when he first got here, he he was figuring life out, you know, okay, what, what is it like to be a part of the Iowa program? He wanted to find out what makes this place so special so that he could contribute in his own way. And, and that's what's so unique about him. He is an unbelievable leader. When he first got here, he was a little bit more soft-spoken and he was a lead by example. He, he did everything to the best of his ability. He has incredible effort. He goes hard every time. He never complains. And that's what, those are the traits that, his teammates start to notice. And then once we transitioned into fall camp, not only was he going hard and playing hard and playing competitive, but he was starting to make a lot of plays. And you saw the ability with his ball skills. You know, he's got incredible ball skills and the effort piece is always there. And so as he started to play and started to earn that role, I think he also earned the respect of his teammates and the way that he goes about his business every single day. He's a great example for the young guys in our room that we want to bring along. And like I said, we've been talking about it since February, the standard that we want to uphold in this room. And it's a day-to-day -day thing. It can't, you can't just pick and choose when you want to uphold that standard. And he does a great job of showing up every day, going to work. And then on Saturdays, it shows. He, he plays with incredible effort. He does his job in the run game. He's reliable in the throw game. And guys, uh, they, they continue to look up to him. And it's been a great addition to our room. Uh, John Steppy. Hey, John, good to see you. Wanted to ask about the ever so exciting topic of run blocking. That seems to be an area that's been really strong this year. Um, kind of what do you attribute that kind of that improvement in run blocking from the receivers and how did that kind of start? Well, it's it started it started when when we did, you know, back back at the beginning of this thing, tried to do a good job of defining for the guys what your job is and and you know, we started out with with three C's. You know, we talk about care, compete, and complete. And within those, you know, the care factor, the first one is the team is always first. And you go down and, and then you go to compete, and it's relentless effort. You need to have incredible effort on every single play. You, whether it's in the run game, the throw game, you have to out-compete the, the, the guy that's across from you. And then the last piece is complete. And when we talk about complete – when you leave here, right, you're going to be developed and you're going to understand exactly, you know, what your job is, what your role is and how to do that. And the how to, right, the guys, if, if it's our job to teach them the how to and then it's their job to take care of the first two all right, where the team is first. Right. And you are, and they have a competitive spirit. And so run blocking is, is it just comes down to that. In my opinion, we got to work the techniques, which we do an in individual. All right. We work we work uh, certain angles, certain blocking schemes that we're doing. But at the end of the day, you have to have a willingness and you have to understand that if that's my job on that particular play, then I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And what's fun is guys get excited about when the guys up front are doing an incredible job. The tight ends are doing a great job. The backs, all right, hit the hit the hole. And now all of a sudden we got a second level block and it's a spring block that takes that thing from maybe 10 yards to 50. And they understand the importance of that and, and how that impacts it. And they get excited about it because every single part of your job is critical. And that's part of our job. And so they know how to do it. And then the effortness and toughness that they show, they've done an incredible job working at it. And it's something that I've really appreciated because they don't take it lightly. Uh, Elliot Clough. Morning, John. Um, wanted to ask about Seth Anderson and and him coming back into the fold. I know he missed a, a decent amount of games at the end of last year, and then of course misses the spring, and then misses the beginning of of the season. But um, 
obviously you you lose another wide receiver to to the portal, but adding him to the fold, I guess. Um, what what kind of dynamic does he bring to to the group on the field, and then how valuable is that added level of experience with such a young group? Yeah, Seth Seth has battled some soft tissue injuries, and he he's done a good job of of trying to work himself back. And fortunate for us, we were able to get him back into practicing a little bit the last couple of weeks. And then what he brings to the table is is he's got he's got high level speed and he, he can uh, separate away from defenders. And I thought he, he's, uh, he's done a great job, you know, just talked to him the other day about trusting his ball skills. You know, I think he's one of the guys that worked extremely hard at it in May and June and July. And when you get into the game, sometimes you revert back to some bad habits and he's just got to trust that continue to trust that because he worked his tail off uh, to improve that part of his game. Cause he's got great speed. He's a great route runner. Uh, can tra can transition after the catch, so he brings an element that can help us in the throw game. And now he's got to trust it and, and uh, make sure that he's not getting ahead of himself. First things first, right? Catch the ball, and and then once we transition out of it, he brings an element to the table. Like I said, with that speed and his route running ability, uh, that can be a problem for defenses. So it's been great to have him back. And and like he's another guy that works works incredibly hard at it. Uh, Tom Caker. John, a couple of guys that we haven't seen a lot of really at all. Um, Moda, he's been hurt a lot. What what have you seen from his development? Also, uh, KJ Parker, the the freshman receiver, and what what you seen from him? Yeah, so Alex, Alex was uh, he, he. I thought Alex took one of the biggest jumps throughout fall camp. He did a great job. Uh, was progressing at, at a really good level. Uh, unfortunately, uh, got a uh, broken wrist. Uh, that he had to get uh, operated on. And so now he's in a club and uh, so can't, you know, can't work the the receiver drills like you'd want to. Uh, but he was a guy that progressed throughout fall camp. He's, he's very smart. He's a, does, does a great job taking notes in the meeting room, transitioning it to the field. And he's got a really good skill set. He's got good speed, uh, good ball skills. And so excited for him to, to get past this injury and, and uh, hopefully get him back into the fold, maybe sometime in bowl prep. Uh, towards the end of the season and then KJ the other guy you mentioned KJ is awesome he he is a guy that he's he's got uh, a, a great positive attitude every single day uh, he's he's figuring out a little bit of life just the the time time schedules you know time management um, you know that side of it he, he's working through that he's young but he's got a really 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 good skill set he he can uh, he can jump you know jump catch the ball run he does a little bit of everything. He's explosive, and uh, he's ju he's just he's just young in this process. And you know that's why I remind him: stay patient. Uh, you know your time's going to come, and when it does come, you're going to be ready to go. And he's he's continued to get better each week. Uh, Corey Breda. Hey John. So uh, during preseason, I think it was a media availability. Um, Tim talked a little bit about how at Western Michigan he had a lot of different wideout coaches that he worked with over the years. Mm -hmm. but everything was taught the same way. And of course they had a lot of success with receivers. How big of an asset has Tim been with your room first, first year on the job in this room for you. And then logistically, how, how do you guys kind of collaborate on decision-making uh, play calling? Obviously you've got the quarterback element too. So there's some crossover there. Can you just kind of give fans an idea logistically of that relationship? Yeah. Tim's been great. He, he's been phenomenal to work with since day one. I've been excited about this process uh, going to work with him and he's he's very detailed, very smart, sees it through a good lens and uh, specific to the wide receiver position. We see it very similarly and he's been a huge help because within the system, the details within it, right, you're you're doing multiple multiple formations, multiple sets, multiple different route trees. And so it's so important that each guy understands the details within it so that we're at the right place at the right time. And that's what I appreciate about Tim is, is he sees it, you know, specifically in the throw game, just how, how important that all is. And he's, he's played it. He's done it at a high level. He's played it at a high level, coached it at a high level from the quarterback position. And those two are so closely tied together because the timing is everything. Timing is critical. And so the, from the release to the depth, to the separation at the top of the route, to how you're coming out of your break points, all that stuff matters. And we spent a lot of time talking about it and working through it and then implementing that uh, with our group. And like I said, we have a young group, but they're a hungry group and they're eager to get better every day. So they're doing a great job taking to the coaching, 
And what's fun is you can see the jumps that guys are making when they start to understand, okay, certain releases and how I can set up this release and how I can have my change up release and, you know, how I can do a better job developing the route. Uh, they've done a good job with that. And, and Tim's certainly been a huge help for me and he's been fun to work with and schematically it's fun. You know, he, he, he loves, he enjoys game planning and going in there, sitting down, watching the tape. All right, what are, what are we getting presented this week and what's the best way to attack it? And then being able to put guys in position to have the most success. So he's done a great job and it's been a lot of fun working with him. Uh, Chad. Yeah, John, um, you know, deep shots have not yet been a part of this year's offense. Do you see that as the next step? Is that harder to do than maybe people realize? Definitely see it as the next step. And, and that's one of the pieces that, as this thing continues to come together with this system, it's a huge part of it. And, you know, guys, guys blocking on the edges, guys being willing uh, to, to put that out there and to do their job. What it sets up is now you get some of the heavier boxes and now it gives you opportunity for the play pass and the movements within it and more explosives within the throw game. And, and so I think that's, that's the next step. And we got to continue to work it each and every week. We need to get, continue to have all of our details within our routes and, be ready for they're, they're going to be one-on-one -on -one opportunities and tell the guys all the time when that ball's in the air, it's our ball, you know, and the quarterback's job is to give us an opportunity and then we got to make a play on the ball. And, and that just comes down to technique and then having a competitive nature within you. And uh, the other piece to it too, is it's one of the things we've been trying to work these last couple of weeks where we saw it show up the most last week was the run after catch, it's, you know, when, when you, when you do catch that ball, it may be an intermediate ball. Those can become explosives if our transition is right. Right. And the, those all of a sudden you might throw a 10 yard throw that becomes a 30 and guys, whether it's the guy that caught it working his transition, puncture in the defense or a guy that doesn't catch it, finding work and creating a spring block for those, those bigger explosive plays. And so the combination of the two getting the play pass, continuing to get going. And then also guys, once they catch that ball, accelerating out of that catch and uh, getting some yards after the catch, I think is an area that we've improved in the last week and want to see it carry over to game days. All right, coach, final two questions. First one is John Steppy. Where have you seen Dayton Howard kind of grow the most over the last year or so? And any words to him after he had that penalty on Saturday? Yeah, the, the first part of the question, seeing him grow, I've seen him grow a ton off the field, which I think has led to the execution piece that he's found on the field. You know, I, when when I first uh, got into this role, the, you know, he, he was he wanted to stay on top of him, academics and uh, time management and all those different areas just and he's young it, it was it was just maturing and, and continuing to understand the importance of it and why we value those things at the University of Iowa and why coach Ferentz has has done it for so many years all right and creating that culture and what Dayton did a great job and it's a testament to him is he he gained my trust because he did everything right off the field and he worked hard he, he in meetings he was attentive he cleaned up everything he's doing a great job in school and, and taking care of his business. And then it wasn't a surprise to see that then transition to the field because he's got all the talent in the world. He's, he's got an incredible skill set. He's long, he's fast. He can create separation at the top of the break, or, uh, top of the route. And so I think all those little things, when he decided to make those important, the that carried over to the field. And then all of a sudden his detail picked up on the field. He was in the right place at the right time doing the things we asked of him. And, and that's why he's had uh, the success and why we're so excited about him moving forward. And uh, the the deal on Saturday is just, just explain to him, obviously, first catch, first touchdown, first penalty. He, he dialed them all up in, in uh, one cat, one play. But he uh, j just wanted to explain to him that e even though there's excitement and I was excited for him, you have to keep your poise. And there, there's those can become such critical penalties within the flow of a game. You put the special teams in a bad spot. You put the defense in a bad spot. And we just can't be doing that. We have to keep our poise. We want to be excited. You want to be it's, – it's an exciting moment. But the first thing you got to do is hand the ball to the official and celebrate with your teammates, right? There's a lot of guys, if you watch that play – the, the most important part of that play was Bowie running a blazer route, taking the top off and then finishing his block at the goal line so Dayton could score. And so I told him, I said, you, you get over to Dayton, you celebrate with him, you know, and, and just 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 continuing to mature. Right. That's that's one of the things that we have to teach for a young group. And it's a great learning lesson for all those guys. Uh, final question, uh, Tyler Tashman. 
Hi, John. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, you've now had half a regular season in this new role um, as, as wide receivers coach. Just wondering what, how you reflect on that. What, what are maybe have been some challenges? Has there been anything that surprised you? Just what, what you enjoy about the role? I enjoy the group. I'm so fortunate to work with a great group of guys. It's a group of guys that have, have embraced me uh, from day one and they, they do what you ask them to do. Uh, they, they're, there's relationships that exist beyond football. It's There's great communication. Guys, that you just stop by. It's a fun group to be around. And they they work hard at it. They pay attention to the details. They have great effort. And like I said, they're working each and every day to continue to get better and, and digest the new system uh, that we're all working through. And so that's the biggest thing that I've enjoyed is, is being with a group of guys. Like I said, top to bottom it's it's a great group and every time I step into that meeting room or they come into my office it's it's enjoyable and so that's been really rewarding and then the other piece to it is is I'm enjoying uh seeing it through a different lens than the quarterback position and and understanding the the prep that goes in throughout the week uh the importance of certain things you emphasize throughout the week whether it's in the run game the throw game you're involved in a lot of different techniques and fundamentals. And that's been a lot of fun to see guys continue to grow and progress as the year has gone on. And certain things that show up on Saturdays that we have to detail up and emphasize within the week, that's been a fun part of the process. So I'm enjoying it. But like I said, the biggest reason why is it's all about the players and they make my job a lot of fun being able to work with them every day. Perfect. Appreciate your time this morning, Coach. Yep, Absolutely, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks John. John.